Penny, for your thoughts? How's everybody doing out there on the internet? This is your friend Big Frank at Eclectic Collecting, and I want to wish you guys a very happy new year. I hope your Christmas was wonderful. I hope you had a wonderful time. I hope everybody got everything they wanted. But in this video, I am going to be unrolling two coin rolls that I ordered as a Christmas gift to myself. I am currently on the hunt for the 1909 VBD San Francisco Mint Penny. This is a rare penny for several reasons. Number one, 1909 is the first year the Wheaties came out. That of course replaced the Indian Head Penny. I don't know exactly how many of the S Mints were minted. I know it is a very low mintage. I have found several 1909 Philadelphias, which are pretty cool. But I'm on the hunt for that 1909 S Mint because it is a holy grail piece for pneumostatics. I really want to find one. So I ordered two rolls off of eBay that had VBD pennies on the ends of them. I'm hoping I find them and I'm hoping it will be everything I want it to be. But like I said, it's rare, it's a little hard to find, and mm, odds are against me, but I will continue the hunt. This particular video is not going to be like a normal unraveling video. It's sped up because there are two there. I took a good hard look at all of them, and if I was to leave this in its full entirety without speeding it up, it would be probably a 40 minute video and I'll probably do a full unravel on a live stream in the future but uh, had to speed it up for time's sake so let's go take a look at those two rolls and with any luck I will have that S mint penny let's take a look all right guys so here we go we're gonna start with one of these rolls and the first thing I do whenever I'm looking through old pennies is I'm going to use a magnet to look for any steel pennies. Anytime I find a steel penny, it's usually a hidden treat. I always enjoy finding those. The two pennies that you saw me move up there to the top, those are going to be the VBDs, and I'm saving those for last. And we've got all the pennies unraveled. All of them look to be about in the same condition. Uh, this magnifying glass right here I bought on Amazon. And it came with the jeweler's loop as well. It's a lighted micro, it's a lighted uh, magnifying glass. Helps me out a lot when I'm looking for finer details on the coins, both on the reverse and the obverse. I'm always looking for, you know, mint errors, that, something that may make a coin jump out. You know, I found maybe a couple of broad strikes and a couple of Brock riches in the past, but uh, always get something to magnify your coins with. It just makes it easier on the eyes. It's the main reason I'm upgrading to a microscope as well because. Uh, they've served their purpose. They're really good. It's a good tool to have, but I would just prefer to be able to show you guys some finer details. Now, the coins I'm actually finding in here mostly are going to be uh, teens, 20s, and 30s, and I just looked at the two VBDs right there, and I am sorry to say that both of these are no mint marks, so no luck there so far. So the first roll, two 1909 uh, Philadelphias, uh, for the BBDs and a bunch from the teens, the 20s, and the 30s. Overall, not a bad roll. You know, I'm actively trying to fill my collection in. And right there, that's one of the uh, BBDs right there. I just took a look at the reverse, just to take a look at it. Haven't looked at the obverse yet. And you saw the jeweler's loop I have there as well. That is just uh, an extra piece for me to have, just to make sure that I have all necessary visible tools at my disposal. You know, sometimes the jeweler's loop works a little bit better than the magnifying glass, sometimes it doesn't, but it's good to have both with me. And so far, 1910, I know that one was. Uh, I think that one that I looked at, yeah, that one was a 1912 that was in really good condition. 1912, very important uh, for me, year of the sinking of the Titanic, and you know that's the subject that got me interested in history. So, 
and it was a very good 1912. I can't wait to show you guys that one under the microscope. So all of these that I'm looking through, a lot of them, teens, 20s, 30s. I did find one from 1927 in this particular role, and that's a special year for me. That's the year my grandfather was born, and uh, I'm going to enjoy taking a look at that one. This one is really interesting. I tried to show it to the camera, but it didn't focus. It looks like somebody dragged a file right across it. There's just like even lines going right across it. But I know that's not mint damage. There's no extra value added to it. So it's just going to be one of the interesting pennies that I have. I actually collect damaged pennies as well. I've got a couple in my portfolio that have WTF on them. Like I enjoy damaged uh, coins as well. They're they're interesting to take a look at. All right, so we've gotten all of the pennies. Looked through. Nothing special really jumped out at me except uh, when I was I got the one of the 1909s mixed in there, so I had to look through them. Found them. All right, so cross your fingers, guys. Hopefully, one of these has an S mint mark. The obverse on this, the reverse on this one was looking really good, nice and clean, and the obverse no mint mark. Again, on the second coin, obverse, the reverse looks good. And on the obverse, no mint mark. So, unfortunately, no luck on these guys right here. And, well, it's not a total loss. I enjoy collecting old pennies. And these are a lot of fun. I'm going to be adding these into my collection. I'm going to be filling in the holes in my collection. And I don't know if I'm going to put all these guys back out on the market because, you know, now officially they're cherry picked and I don't want to do that to any buyers out there. That's not cool. But I'm probably going to keep these because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Coins may be taken out of circulation and all of these may jump in value when that happens or, you know, they all may end up just being worth scrap value. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, so I'll just have to wait and see what happens. But for now, the vast majority of these are going to be going into the cardboard sleeves just like this and they're going to be in my collection for a long time. This was a lot of fun, and I can't wait to do it again. I got another roll on the way, and let's head over to myself for our final thoughts. Yeah, unfortunately, no S mint pennies, but it's okay because these 1909s, I'm taking a closer look at them, they're in, I would say very good to extra fine condition. They're looking pretty good. And I'm gonna thoroughly enjoy cataloging those. And with any luck, by the next time I upload another numismatics video, I'll have my coin microscope with me. I ordered it off of Amazon because I got a lot of gift cards this year. I actually told my family, look, just get me gift cards. You don't have to get me anything at all. You know, just having you here is enough they sent me a lot of gift cards they got me a lot of gift cards so there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming uh in the mail over the next few days for me and it's it's <laughs> it's a necessity for me to have well for any numismatic collector to have a coin microscope don't get me wrong these jewelers loops and these magnifying glasses are really good but you know it's this is what you look like most of the time. And it's kind of murder on the back. I also can't wait for the microscope to come in so that I can actually give you guys better footage of what I'm looking for. In all the rolls, I have found a lot of things that are potentially really cool errors. So if you really want to take a look at some errors, I just all, where are they? Here they are. I have them set aside isolated and ready to go of all the pennies that I have gone through all of these are potential errors but they need to be looked at closer it's about maybe 30 coins here that I set aside because they may be errors and I can't wait to see them under the coin microscope there's one penny that I'm calling the mohawk penny if it is a mint error it's gonna be one of the one of the coolest ones I've ever seen but just got to keep our fingers crossed for that because sometimes, you know, doing the actual examination, 
not gonna yield the results you want, but make sure you click that subscribe button. And when the coin microscope comes, we will do a full unboxing and we will test it. So make sure you click that subscribe button. Again, a very happy 2023 to everybody. I hope your year is prosperous. I hope it is wonderful for you. And I hope every dedication and every resolution you make comes true. Until then, well, I'm going to be uploading a lot more of the classic eclectic collecting videos and the eclectic arsenal videos. So make sure you make sure you click that subscribe button to see when it pops up. And don't forget to hit the notification bell as well. Until then, this is Big Frank reminding you, if you're not collecting eclectic, you're not collecting at all.